Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. This, of course, is one of the most iconic quotes in cinematic history. Rick Blaine's reaction to Isla, Isla Lund's entry into his Casablanca, Casablanca gin joint and gambling den. Casinos have long featured heavily in some of the most iconic and classic films of all time. One such film is Rain Man, which is notable as one of the first movies to be shot in an actual casino, the legendary Caesar's Palace. The audience is introduced to the true scale and size of the Las, Las, of the Las Vegas casinos, which are immense. The film industry's fascination with casinos has spanned decades, and as an example of this can be seen with the 1960 comedy film Ocean's Eleven, featuring Rat Pack members such as Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin and Sammy Davis Jr. <clears throat> the success of the remake in 2001, with the likes of high-ranking Hollywood names such as George Clooney, Elliot Gould and Brad Pitt, proved the ongoing interest in the theme. Alternatively, the supposed, supposedly seedy side of the casino industry has been pushed into public conscious through films such as Robert De Niro's Casino from 1995. This, is, this tells the story of greed, deception, money, power and murder occur between two friends, a mafia enforcer and a casino executive, compete against each other over a gambling empire and over a fast love it, fast living, a fast loving socialite. Films and culture in general have presented the casino as a fantastical world where stakes can be high and lives can be changed forever. The only way for the ordinary person to experience these highs and lows of casino ownership was through mediums such as this. That was until game developers LV Games Dev came to along defenses with Sim Casino. <clears throat> a modern casino a modern casino tycoon simulation in full 3D glory. Build a casino, set yards, expand into a luxury hotel casino or go cheap and extract maximum profits. Keep the vault secure at all times and beware of criminals and cheaters. Probably the most important first step in any management simulation is to run through the tutorial, if you're looking to even find one. Casino tutorial is split into five sections. Camera controls, building and decorating, a successful casino, managing staff and crime and finally inventory and finance. These cover various aspects of the game. The tutorial follows the path of setting your task which is select like the wall tool. The button that needs, press, needs pressing flashes. It isn't until you hover over and click on the task that it becomes obvious where the requisite button, I, button items are on the screen. While this approach isn't a bad thing, it's not helped by the poor flashing mode. This makes finding the next step easy to miss unless you're looking directly at the right part of the screen. Overall, while the tutorial offers a small introduction, it doesn't cover the master, vast amounts of data that exist within the game. It doesn't even be, doesn't begin to scratch the to scratch the surface of the depth of the game. For example, within the financial hub tutorial, we're not given any introduction into, daily, into the daily profit and loss, bank loss, or casino evaluation sections and menus. Considering the driving force of the game is money, this can be seen as an oversight. However, a, a, a huge oversight is that research even doesn't even feature at all. <clears throat> it will certainly give you a start in the game, this does, this does leave you with a steep learning curve if you are to get most, the most out of the large amount of data and build options that the depth of the game offers you. The user interface, while not the prettiest, is relatively easy to navigate with most of the buttons displayed in a menu on the side of the screen. The remaining buttons are on a ribbon across the bottom of the, of the screen. The main section here is in the middle of the ribbon. Here you will find the build, finance, management attractions, operations, inventory and transport and research hubs. It should be noted that once you enter one of these screens, with the exception of the build menu, you can navigate to any of the hub, other hubs without returning to the main main, main screen. <coughs> it appears that it, it appears it, that it surely would have been better just to have one item the, on the, on this gray, gain screen to then access the hubs. This would re reduce the clutter on the main screen. This is minor complaint though, and doesn't detract from the game at all. The build hub, however, can be much tricky to navigate. While it is divided into dis distinct sections, it's, some it's sometimes much quicker to look in the search bar for what you need. With time and experience, finding it will become much quicker. But the overall light is not, not user-friendly. Squashing everything into a panel at the bottom of the screen, the bottom of the screen. The research screen, in contrast, is more accessible as everything is, cl is in clear sections and a large window. Overall, the user interface pro provides a huge amount of detail on several aspects of the game. Unfortunately, this comes with very little guidance, and once again, the game means there will be, there will be a relatively steep learning curve to fully master it. On, the start, on start a new game, you, will, you, you see that casino, Sim Casino doesn't offer a difficulty setting. 
it approaches this with a different option. Instead of difficulty, you can choose the level of starting cash you have. Obviously, the more cash you start with, the easier the game becomes. There's also additional features that you can label. The first one is unlock cash feature, which allows you to get into debt and spending money you don't have. Secondly, the instant research option speeds up the process of making the research components available much quicker. This in turn, of course, will of course make the game easier. Third, allows you to have inventory auto delivered finally finally removing weight for new staff to, finally removing the weight removing the weight for new staff to arrive all these all all or any of these combinations like you alter the difficulty of your game in a number of different ways even though the tutorial is limited it provides you with a great starting point for your first casino however you will never you will you will never start building a bingo hall and slot machines which will attract your first customers from there through research and expansion you can you can start adding various elements such as toilets restaurants several different gambling tables and even the hotel rooms to expand your growing empire a feature of the game or a uh, feature a, a great feature of the game well this is very a, a very person much a personal thing is staff recruitment is dealt with by the game this removes what could be a full-time job in itself in addition to this it also manages manages ordering all the resources you need for your, for the casino for example food and drink to push us into the next level you you then need to start looking into dizzying amounts of data presented to you this enables you to identify which game areas are successful which game areas are successful which are not you can tweak the cost and the price of the game which tell you how many people will play based on the cost this is invaluable in understanding the reasons why some aspects are a success and some are not it must be said though that there are times in the game where you can simply press play sit back and watch the game play itself as the money rolls in without any interaction from yourself Throughout the game, you will occasionally get messages related to aspects of the casino and its patrons. For example, a guest with an urgent need, urgent rest needs to, wants to leave. I would assume these are hints to things that you could or should be looking at within the casino. It is, however, all to simply ignore them as you never really see any real, any real world consequences. It is also unclear what you are supposed to do once you have completed your first casino. While you can, set, you can sell the casino and start a new one, there is no feeling of personal development or increasing levels of difficulty. For example, Miss it, mission. Build a casino, make X money, and have X number of guests. It's simply build a casino, count until you have maxed everything out or get bored. In conclusion, the, to the tutorial is shallow in depth and seemingly ignores vast sections of the game. It does, however, at least open basic gameplay, leaving you with a steep learning curve. The user interface is clunky at best, and some sections, such as the build menu, are difficult to navigate and poorly laid out. Also, there are times when there is a lack of activity or, in, or in interaction with the game, when you could simply press play, leave it, and without having to leave it running without having, ever having to lift a finger. While there are several areas where it seems there is no need for improvement, there are they, these are not game breaking. They are merely parts that will take you long to master. It's a fun game to play, with, with the only real constraint being your your creativity. You could certainly lose yourself quite happily for a few hours building your your own homage to Las Vegas. It's been Flash Drasman with a review of Sim Casino. Thanks very much to the Strategy Informer for the key. If you check out the link in below, you'll find that I'm a member of a quite a large uh, team that focus on Forex games and all sorts of strategy gloriousness. So check out the link Strategy Informer in the description below. Thanks very much. Hope, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. If you've played it yourself. Put it in the comments. Let me let me know what you thought of the game. If you disagree with what I've said, again, put it in the comments. Anyway, thanks very much for listening, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Cheers. Bye.